In our previous sessions, we have seen what are the basic terms and concepts, principles of accounting. Now we all know my friend Peter. His grocery store business is really doing well. And on a daily basis, he has to deal with many transactions. So he wanted to know what are some important things in accountancy which will help him to keep his records in a more organized format and also help him to save time as well as get accurate reports. So in this session, we are going to talk about a very important topic of accounting that will help a business to have organized, classified and accurate reports, that is classification of accounts. Well, at some point we all must have had this problem of not being able to find the right outfit on time because of having a very messy and clumsy wardrobe, right? Let's say we were finding our favorite black shirt and we might have even gotten late for work or school because of that. How can this problem be fixed? What if we organized our wardrobe as different drawers or compartments and labeled each one of them neatly. Now is it easier to find that black shirt we were looking for? Of course. Let's try to connect the same scenario to accounting. Suppose we record different transactions aimlessly anywhere in our books. Can we locate all bank related transactions easily? And answer what will be the bank balance? No, everything here is jumbled up and we would not be able to find what is the right balance and the right details of any particular account. Therefore, we group all transactions belonging to one category in one account. So if all bank related transactions are recorded separately under a separate bank account, then we can easily locate all bank transactions and find what is the correct bank balance. Similarly, we will maintain a separate cash account which will give details about how much cash we received, how much cash we have paid and how much we will have at the end of one accounting period. In the same way, we will have a separate capital account, a separate account for Mr. X, salary account, and well, in accountancy, we generally denote the word account by AC. So from what we have seen, we can summarize or conclude that an account is a systematic and summarized record of similar kind of transactions pertaining to one particular person, property, or any expense and incomes. Having understood this first step, Let's move on to a very important and very basic accounting concept, which is classification of accounts. Just like we maintain different drawers in a wardrobe and classify them into different heads, in the same way in accountancy we will classify different accounts into two types, namely personal and impersonal account. But why do we need to classify them? Because well-classified accounts will help us to make the correct entries and to prepare sound financial statements that is the profit and loss and the balance sheet so coming to the first category that is personal account personal the word relates to a person so we would have David's account Philip's account Jack's account accounts having names of people or natural persons but personal accounts in accounting also includes artificial or legal persons as well when we say artificial person in any company or organization the decisions are made in the name of the company and not any particular person but the law gives the company certain privileges or rights to be considered as a person they have a separate legal identity and therefore all organizations come under personal account so artificial persons include public limited companies private limited companies firms cooperative societies etc for example abc private limited 
or Blossom Cooperative Housing Society. There are also certain accounts like say the capital account which represents money brought in by the owner. Owner is a personal account. So capital account is actually representing a person. These kind of accounts are also called as personal accounts and we call them the representative personal account. Similarly, there is debtor's account which represents all different persons owing money to the business. So again, debtor is a representative personal account. Let's move on to the second category that is impersonal account. Anything which does not fall into the personal account is an impersonal account. It is further classified into two categories that is real account and nominal account. Real account relates to the company's properties and assets which are owned by the business concern like furniture, land, buildings, etc. Now assets like furniture and machinery and building are tangible in nature. They have a physical existence and they can be seen and touched. But we all must have come across terms like copyrights, trademarks, patent rights, goodwill of a company. All of these can be owned by a business and they have money value even though they are not physical in nature. These are intangible assets of a business and these can be found on documents. So the real accounts includes all tangible as well as intangible assets. Next is the nominal account. These accounts relate to all income and expenses, profits and losses. Let's say we pay salaries or we pay rent or we pay training fees. Actually, what we are doing here is we are paying money, but they are all given specific names depending upon the reason of payment. Are you getting me? We are paying money for rent or money for salaries. Such accounts like the salary expense account or the rent expense account, interest expense account, or also incomes like commission received account, interest received account, discount received account, all of these accounts exist only in name, meaning they are nominal. Hence, they are termed as nominal accounts. So from all that we have seen, that is personal, real and nominal accounts, what we can conclude is that the items that appear on the profit and loss account or the income and expenses statement consist of all nominal accounts. Whereas the balance sheet, which state our assets and liabilities, consists of all personal and real accounts. Peter says he can relate this information to what he is doing and he can understand his accounts a little better now and keep them organized. Let's have a quick recap of what we have learned in this session. Let's check our understanding by doing a little exercise. Classify these accounts into personal, real or nominal. Joy's account. Cash account. Capital account. Interest paid account. Interest received account. Salary account Bank account Machinery account ABC Private Limited account Goodwill account So that's all for today's session. If you like this session, give us a thumbs up and share your feedback in the comment section below. 
to stay updated with our latest videos, please subscribe to our channel Let's Do It. We are all here to help you understand accounting in a more logical and interesting manner. Thank you.